if you're wanting to keep the gospel central in your church, do not be surprised. Do not be surprised yeah. when the suffering of Jesus Christ becomes a reality in the life of those who serve. That is actually God's way of keeping the gospel right up front in the, life of the, in the lives of the preachers. God appoints suffering mm -hmm. for gospel preachers. Why? Why? So that the gospel is seen before it's even heard. It's seen. We become cruciform. We become, as it were, the scum of the earth. <laughs> yeah. If that's what you're signing up for, to be like Jesus, even conformed to the likeness of his suffering, then it's a, it's, a, it's a high calling. It's a high calling. You want to keep the gospel central? Do not be surprised when God fills your life with suffering. Uh, embrace it. Trust him. Lean upon his promises and cling to the, the spirit of God who's, who dwells with him. He'll get you through it. So. Wow. There's so many questions here. It's not possible. <laughs> so um, maybe we can ask a few of these that are directly related to Amber, these two. What efforts are you, Amber, making to get more ministers and churches join with Amber? Okay, talk about that. Well, we think it's gonna happen organically. Yeah. We, 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 we're not trying to create something big. We want to see what God wants to do. Yeah. And so as, uh, churches and ministers approach us and lean in or connect with us we want to uh, we want to include them and we're, we're trying to figure that out but uh, um, we, we, we don't think it we're not we're not create, trying to create a machine so yeah. if you know somebody who needs fellowship or to be part of a network like this uh, th then then point them in our direction and yes we'll reach out to them and, and uh, but um, organically and we don't have a clue what we're doing yeah. let's be honest <laughs> oh you weren't supposed to confess that <laughs> no I think that's really good actually because uh, you can go to our website there's a way to get onto our email list but quite honestly we have been wrestling with this a bit we're saying okay we got it we got to open it so people can connect and and honestly we're not sure but but even just this afternoon, we spoke for a short time, eating cold pizza in the prayer room. <laughs> and we just, we honestly just said, you know, I, I think we just need to open the conversation and just pray, God, what would you do? And, and I love that answer, Elroy. That, that is really the heart. The last thing we need is another denomination. Because it is so machinery driven. Like, we got this massive budget, like over $2 million in the denomination we were in annually for 20-some plus staff members and offices and computers and flying everywhere and all that stuff. And you just think, are you kidding me? Look what one pastor who drives a Harley can do. <laughs> you, you know what was the best thing today? When Elroy and I were driving back to the hotel, because I had to nap, I, I was, my brain was so full, I had to have a rest. <laughs> Keith drives up beside us, he's go, obnoxious enough for you, and then he revs his, his Harley. <laughs> I was about to show him what a Camry can do. But I remember it's close to 300,000 K and I don't want to, I don't want to bust anything. We have, we have to get home. But look what God is doing with a local church pastor. We're just pastors. We still have to preach on Sunday. 
You can tell Sean's a discipleship pastor, the way he's thinking, and he still has to lead families and growth groups. And you know what? Quite honestly, we don't want to make some big machine. If God would do this with an association and we can serve him and still serve a local church, guess what? You got people who are still in the trenches, boots on the ground. They haven't lost touch and they love their people. We got nothing to prove. We just want to serve the Lord. So, I, I drive um, <clears throat> a Chevy Cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> With um, with uh, with rusty doors. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, uh, I think what Brother Norm is saying is is really important. Actually, what happens, and and this doesn't have to happen in denominations, but what often does happen in denominations, I'm talking about denominations as far as like the the machinery, the structure, all that. What what generally happens is that. Um, they start off and they're led by pastors, yeah. led by men who step in the pulpit, open the book and preach, men of conviction, men with, with passions for the Lord. And what happens eventually over time, doesn't have to again, but what tends to happen is that that generation that starts it kind of when they hand it off, they hand it off to uh, not men who are men of conviction. Denominations start off to uh, preserve identity, but what ends up happening is it gets passed off to managers, yeah. men who want yes. to men who want to preserve not identity, but the infrastructure of a denomination. And then it's not the word leading from the front. It's pragmatism leading from the front. How can we keep the money flowing? How can we broaden our, 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 our net <laughs> so we can bring in more and more people? And we become, then what happens to the next generation is that they just lose the gospel entirely, yeah. right? So we need to keep this, whatever it is that we do do, and we don't really know what we're going to do. Hopefully we don't do do. Uh, but <laughs> whatever it is that we do, we need to lead. <laughs> we, need to lead with the, we, we need to lead with the book open and, yeah. and uh, keep it <clears throat> convictional for the truth. Yeah. Do you guys want to say anything? I got nothing. Okay. You know, I, I do think we need to be done. It's already 9.35. I, I hope you hear the heart that we share. And I know that we don't just share this as pastors. I know in, in our fellowship in Calgary, we share this not just as paid pastors, but with our lay pastors, with our elders. And as I've talked with some of you, and, and you know, even I was talking with Frank just before this, and, and as we are, and he is an elder with Edgar. And, and he's my paisano. Yes, <laughs> he, he's, a, he's, he's part of the mob, I think. The, <laughs> the, Itali the Italian connection with Mike and Frank, I think we have gotta keep an eye on those two. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? This goes exactly back to what Sean said. We want gospel culture more than we want brand and, and machinery and denomination. I'm almost 60. Look at I, my daughter says to me, Dad, you know how old you are? She's like 30. And I say, she says, you're almost 60. I just turned 59. And you know what I, I said? I know what you're really saying, Carolee. You're really saying I'm closer to the end than the beginning. That's what you're trying to say to me. And I am. So thank God we can hand this off. And, and God is doing this in his church. So we want it to be humble and grassroots and faithful. And we pray that God will bring up the next generation. Not just pastors who are paid, but lay pastors, lay elders, 
church people, servants. I, this is what we want. So I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Edgar if he would pray and close us off. And then we'll be done tonight and we will, we will enjoy, have the joy of returning in the morning. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you the credit for what's been going on here. We are so thankful to you for um, how you've prepared our brothers in opening up their word, how have you prepared the music team to lead us in, in singing to you. Lord, uh, only you are worthy of our praise, only you are worthy of our worship. And thank you, Father, that we have Jesus Christ as our common denominator, and that's what makes us connected to each other. That was, that's, that's who makes us, brothers and sisters, in your family. Thank you. Thank you for uh, feeding us on your word. Thank you for the joy that we have in hearing excitement from brothers and sisters, which props us up too. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for a visible sign that we're not in this alone, but you have your kids scattered throughout this country who love you and are committed to you. Thank you so much for that, Lord. And Lord, we look forward to uh, tomorrow and feeding some more off your word. I ask that you would bless us all tonight as we go back to our places of rest. May we have wonderful dreams of your truth. <laughs> and may we come back tomorrow morning excited to see each other and to open up your word again. Make tomorrow a fantastic day according to you. We ask this with trust in you for your glory and for our good. In Jesus' name, amen.